Hello, welcome to the Bruce Is All Research Channel. I'm from Montreal, Quebec. My name is Bruce Schwartz. I research in ufology and astronomy, and I do a lot of researching like you all do on your own, online, to see exactly what's going on because no one's telling us the truth. We have all this jumbled up information on the internet, both all the truth, basically, and mixed in with a lot of lies. What am I looking at? This is serious. And before I start explaining this, what we're looking at, I'm going to explain first that it's a strong magnification of the surface, no blurs, no pixelation, exposure completely brought down for us to be able to see. So it's not that we can't see anything in this image, we can see everything in the image because we brought the exposure down. Now let's talk about what we're looking at. Would be absolutely impossible to see in the right two circles that change of movement of that light. Note that across the board, we're looking at an area of maybe 9 to 10 uh, kilometers, maybe 12 kilometers wide. And we're also seeing that there are, are lights appearing simultaneously in different areas, two or three different areas simultaneously, many miles apart. It's a big thrust of energy for us to be able to see it from Earth. And of course, with the exposure all the way up, we would see absolutely uh, only one flash on the right. We don't see the difference of those other two spots that are illuminating at the same time. And haven't I showed you in the past that UFOs before appearing um, or UAPs to another destination, often the light lights up on the surface before that light goes to that area. A little complicated listen to what I just said, and it makes a lot of sense. That's literally visually what we're looking at and what I've shown many times now with different captures in different areas. So is it a beam leaving the area that's flying towards other areas? Is something being launched from the surface? Is there fighting? Um, a lot of these things come into mind when you're seeing visual proof of these lights. And don't forget, if you're just arriving to this channel, I've showed it many a times and you can see it in many videos. Who's this little guy? Not very little, and he's sort of erratic. Can't really call that a UFO, now can we? Maybe a biological living organism would be pretty large flying around the moon. Could living organisms be living around uh, the moon, either on the surface too, or just in the atmosphere? So here's the situation. This is in the negative. You're looking at an unknown object. It looks like it's alive. It's not following a straight trajectory. It does look alive, definitely, and they're going inside of the craters. You could see a smoke, haze, that's very thick, so it's a lot more than just a haze. Look up the meaning of hazes. I don't think it means thick, dense smoke that you can't see through. So the secrets underneath this haze is uh, or clouds are huge, huge. But the secret of how they're hiding everything is not huge, and it's being hidden with natural forces. Imagine if there are cloud uh, clouds on the moon in the atmosphere, more than we thought. They wouldn't have to lift the finger except for sets up some bright lights up on the surface. So you're looking at a real UFO going into a crater, and there's no classification for that. And Pentagon, nobody talks about it. Some of the lights appear bright and just before they descend, don't look like they're exploding or anything, but some of them do. We'll look at that probably a bit further in the video. But why the fiery tail, the smoky tail, right? And, you know, light, whether they're light beings or uh, it's just UAPs or it's debris catching on fire and descending down into the atmosphere after they burn up, it wouldn't do this, split in two. A direct line between these two lights because lights are being spit out of UFOs. UFOs are spitting, or UAPs are spitting out lights from themselves. Straight line into the haze and smoke. So we're looking on the surface. This is near Copernicus. And we're looking at the surface with the exposure right down, zoomed up on one area, slowed down. And sometimes there's more activity than others. And we could see this activity, which again, was never spoken about lights splitting in two. I showed these so quickly, but when I find out more information about them or have a better narrative, 
I show them when there's uh, no sky outside and it's raining, I'm looking through my footage. Hours ago, NASA's administrator announced that China was taking over, trying to take over the moon. And it was being done through space programs and space missions. It's uh, something that just came out. And now, what are they going to do? Send their Uyghurs up there to try to reform them? And we're seeing all these lines and what looks like buildings and uh, on top of it, deliberate pieces over top that look like they're trying to make it reflective and hide the surface. This was seen by taking the exposure down. I wouldn't have seen it if not. Just wanted to throw that one in there. Seeing the lights literally on the surface uh, throw out projectiles of lights, what the heck do you want it to be if it's not fighting, you know? These don't look so much like biological creatures or living organisms, that's for sure. They look more or less like, I don't know what to call them, UAPs? It, you know, if it's a UFO, it's inside of the light and you can't see them. But there's always different characteristics like these where you could see lights going by, even in triangular formation, but these little objects or vessels, literally vessels that have this smoke or plume coming up from the back of it. Look higher up on the top, get close up. This, again, same area, exposure taken down so that we can see the object smoking a lot better. Look at it. Whoa. And there's the smoke rising. This object is so massive on the surface. I have no idea what it is, but it stops, it takes off, and it leaves objects behind it before it goes into the craters, like you're going to see here. It's going to leave an object that's going to be stationary. Watch it. There it is. Boom. Leaves it there, and that light behind it remains there. Someone's going to say, like, so what? Well, it's important to document as it goes into the crater, by the way, you see it descending inside of the crater. I mean, you know, how much more proof do you need? And it's on the surface. Smokes and hazes make it hard to see the surface. The whole ideal is to hide the surface. You see that this object lets off a yellow gas, literally a fluorescent color in the air and reacting with this object that's both slowing down and, um, you know, taking off faster and leaving a smoke trail behind it. All beautiful proof. Can you call these UFOs? It'd be pretty hard. And, the, you know, about the smoking the surface, look at this object. Inside of it, you can see a darker object, and there's smoke deliberately coming out of this object. Why are they smoking the surface? It makes absolutely no sense. And there's the object over there on the right, and you can see it. Just this massive plume of smoke that's on the surface, and sometimes lights come from these um, massive hazes is it because ufos are roaming around hiding inside of them or is it something that's living the one stationary on the right i'm close up to it and now i'm going off to the left to show you that there's actually fire coming from underneath it it looks like an object going down to the surface and they just literally had fire and smoke behind it yes fire and smoke on the moon ladies and gentlemen as this object is headed down towards the surface, showing this beautiful, this is, I mean, incredible uh, shot, right? Look at the smoke rising up and drifting off as it fades away, and the other object just goes invisible under the clouds of the atmosphere of the moon, the dense clouds or smokes. So these lights that are lighting up are actually changing places, and we're seeing lots of lights lighting up. Reminds me of when we fight here on Earth. I'll leave it at that. And right now we're inside of Aristarchus Crater. That's literally at the top uh, rim of the crater. Lots of movement there and like, duh. There's obviously a long line that leaves there and goes to another area. Here, Merfecanitatius, where I'm seeing most of the activity and they're hiding under the hazes. We're even seeing the fires at the back of these objects lifting up off the surface. So don't ask, you know, if there's anyone up on the moon, there's definitely someone up on the moon. So we see different characteristics, right? And I'm very happy to be able to show it that this object does not look like the light that's flying around at high speeds. This object is really, really slow on the surface of the moon. Check it out. So I'm going to lift the exposure a little bit here so you can deliberately some of the, see some of the surface and pixelation and smoke moving around. And the goal is to see how close it is to the surface, my friends. Look at the light. 
brightness in the clouds or on the surface of the moon. It's incredible. Do you understand? It's touching the surface. It lights up at the same time when the light of this UFO lights up or a creature lights up. You see a light on the surface also. It's re refracting, reflecting off the surface. And again, that other light in the bottom, a stationary object. And they're coming out of the craters. Look at this one that comes out of the crater. Lights up really brightly. And then, boom, you see that when it fades out, either it was, it was hit or whatever, you, it... Uh, forms a massive plume at the back and there's more than one object and they're moving um, similar or simultaneously across the surface here again same uh, area bring exposure right down so we can see even more details inside of the smokes you see what i'm doing anyways that's how i do the research i hope you do appreciate it bit by bit without throwing too much junk into the videos there's already a lot that i showed in this video and anyways, I'm lucky to have you all appreciating it, guys. I love you all so much. Honestly, guys and gals, thanks for the generous contributions. Also, if you're here, you're contributing to the channel. Doesn't matter cause disclosure's coming soon